So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about airbrushing your lips, pretty much what I think about it, and I will also be doing a tutorial for you. So if you are interested, please keep watching. So when you order stencils from Dynair or from airbrushmakeup.com, same place, you get three stencils that come in the lip stencil set. And each of those stencils has a different shape. So you'll find that stencil one has a shape that's like this, where it has the top lip and the bottom lip. And then stencil two has the full lip, which is one is a thicker lip and one is a thinner lip. And then lip stencil three is similar to lip stencil two that has a full lip. One is a full lip that's thicker and the other one is a full lip with a slightly different shape to it. So those three different stencils are just supposed to be like a guideline for you. They're not supposed to be a perfect fit. By no means is there any stencil that's going to be one size fits all because we all have different lips. Um, so you utilize the stencils just by utilizing the outline of the stencil to where you need to place it. So I'm going to show you how I went ahead and utilized that stencil to get this look using stencils one and three. So the first stencil I'm going to use is from card number three in my lip stencil set and I'm going to go ahead and use the bottom lip and I'm just going to go ahead and apply um, the upper portion of that lip stencil to my top lip to create a nice defined um, dip right where my cupid's bow is. I'm going to use that same upper portion part of that stencil just to go ahead and create an outline on the rest of my upper lip. For this, my compressor dial is at 10 o'clock. You can be at 12 o'clock. I just prefer when I do detail work to be at 10 o'clock. And the shade I'm using here is mauve. The next stencil I'm going to be using is from Lip Stencils card number one. And I'm just going to go ahead and use the bottom portion just to go ahead and outline my lower lip. So here I'm going to start in the middle of my lower lip and then I'm just going to go ahead and bend the stencil around my natural lip to go ahead and get a nice smooth outline. Next I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the mauve on my whole lip. Now when you're doing this you can go ahead and keep your lip straight but I recommend that you go ahead and stretch your lip out. So give yourself a big smile, that way you don't get those um, defined lines, especially when you're smiling after you already airbrushed your lip color. Also make sure that you take the time to just dry your lip color with the air coming from the airbrush gun. Next I'm just going to go ahead and take a Q-tip and I'm just going to go ahead and run it on the outer rim of my lip just to make sure that the line is nice and defined. The next step is to take Moist and Dewy just to add a little bit of shine to my lips. Be careful not to overdo it on the Moist and Dewy because it can cause problems with your lip color. Also make sure you allot enough time for the Moist and Dewy to set before you do anything else. I saw how I utilized the stencils to go ahead and airbrush my lip color. Now there are some times where I just use just the um, top portion of the stencil just to get that nice outlined dip on the top of my lip here and then the rest of course I'll freehand it. So freehanding is always an option. Trust me, um, using the stencils makes it so much faster but you know if you find that you're faster with freehanding I definitely recommend that you go ahead and practice your freehanding. You know just at least practicing getting that outline. Do I recommend airbrushing your lip color? I would say that I recommend airbrushing your lip color if and only if you are doing it for photography or you're doing it for filming purposes. So now I want to talk to you about problems that could arise with airbrushing your lips. Problem number one, eating or drinking, you will lose pigment here. Problem number two, if you spray too much moist and dewy, your pigment is going to travel and then it's going to disappear and you're going to have patches everywhere. So don't use too much moist and dewy, keep a light hand, just give yourself enough to make it shiny, not too shiny. Third problem that you might have with airbrushing your lips. I'm going to show you right now. If you blot too much, you get patches. Yes, you get patches in your airbrush lip color. I don't know how you feel about lip color, but I personally prefer when there's not patches in it. But if you know better than to be blotting all the time, then you'll be fine. <laughs> um, otherwise, the airbrush lip color is perfect. It lasts all day. You don't have to worry about it getting on your teeth because it won't transfer to your teeth. It's actually quite lovely. It feels very light. doesn't feel like you have anything on. Like when you kiss stuff, it doesn't transfer anywhere. Nada. 
So, I mean, that is all a plus when it comes to airbrushing your lips. So airbrushing your lips for dinner or a lunch date? No, no. Airbrushing your lips for photography or film? Definitely a plus. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you and I hope you got a little bit of information that can be useful for you. If you know any tips or tricks on how to keep um, your airbrush um, makeup on the lips there all day long, please comment in the box below. I would love to hear it because I am dying to make sure that I'm utilizing my airbrush system in every possible way that I can. So just go ahead and leave that in the comment box below. Otherwise, I'll still be searching for a way to keep my lip color on my lips because Eventually, I'm going to find something that makes my airbrush makeup 100% perfection. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching, and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.